Hello everybody, Spider-Man is here, the Avengers are here, even Patrick of Ireland and Francis of Assisi are here, and we want to talk to you about history of Christianity early to medieval. We're going to review the syllabus so that you can know the requirements and expectations and just get an idea of what's ahead of you in this class. This is the syllabus for spring 2023 and this is the section that meets in the classroom and via the flex format. Now I really like the flex format. It gets better and better all the time and those of you that were in my flex class in the fall you're laughing at me right now but I am the eternal optimist and I really think we're going to get this flex format down right this time and uh, y'all were so patient with me in the fall I know we're going to have a better time in the spring all right the reason people are laughing at me is because uh, I am technologically challenged but the flex format really did work and those of you who are taking this class uh, in the flex format I think you'll enjoy the uh, robust interaction that takes place when you sit in live uh, for the class and if you uh, watch the video lecture at your convenience well that's a good option as well but the flex format gives me a chance to teach students in the classroom and students uh, in a distance uh, location uh, in a way that I feel is robust and effective I hope you will feel the same way the class will meet Monday afternoon from 2 to 4 50 p.m. I don't have the classroom yet but I will let you know as soon as I do all right let's talk about my contact information the very best way to reach me is through my office email uh, this way I can keep track of uh, my correspondence with you and it makes it easier for me to uh, respond to you in a an effective and timely fashion you can communicate with me through the canvas shell and I'm learning how to do that but I still prefer that you use my office email address if you would please all right my phone number is listed there this is my new office phone number you're welcome to call me at any time if I'm not here leave me a message and I will return your phone call or if you are on campus and uh, want to come by my office you're welcome to do that I am in the Dodd building number 105 well if you do not know where the Dodd building is let me show you all right everyone knows where the level chapel is you see it and the sidewalk that leads uh, out uh, uh, toward the the south all right and then you see this beautiful gateway that actually came from our original location out in the garden district once you go through the gate this is looking at the gate from the other direction the Dodd building is right there to the right and there is a door now if you prefer to uh, come from the front walk you see the entrance right here you see these three archways my office is the uh, archway that is on the left but you enter through the center archway and then you will come to my office uh, number 105 Rex Butler outside you'll see artwork uh, this is the work of uh, Christopher Johnson who is uh, one of my students who loves uh, church history and comic books just like I do unlike me however he is artistic and he can put all of this together in some very interesting artwork that I have posted outside my door 
Speaking of my door, I've got a door knocker with Spider-Man on it. And uh, if I'm inside, it'll say, come in. I'm hanging out and I would love to hang out with you anytime. All right, so please come by my office if you are on campus. Now, let's talk about required textbooks. First, Justo Gonzalez, The Story of Christianity, Volume 1, The Early Church to the Dawn of the Reformation. I think you will really enjoy this textbook. Justo Gonzalez is extremely readable, and he writes history like it is a story, hence the title, The Story of Christianity. This book is one of the reasons why I decided to make church history my major subject and I hope it will inspire you as well. Our other textbook is Documents of the Christian Church. Uh, it is an edited book. It is a reader that is filled with primary sources. So you can read the writings of the people that we study about. And then there will be additional required reading from primary sources that are available for free on the internet. All of this is on your uh, uh, syllabus and course schedule. Now, you can order your books from nobts.ecampus.com. Now, we have a fairly new uh, learning platform called Canvas. And if you will go online to your Canvas account, you'll find that you will be automatically enrolled by the first day of the semester, which is January 17th. Probably not any sooner than that. Uh, but that's why I am sending this out to you for your information. All right, when you uh, enter into Canvas, uh, you'll see a module that says welcome begin here. So the first thing you'll find is a welcome video from Dr. Jamie Dew, our seminary president. Don't you just love Dr. Dew? He is so enthusiastic and I am so thankful that God brought him here to our seminary. Listen to his welcoming words. Well, then you can listen to your professor. Uh, I also have a welcome for you uh, in a video format and then also this video explanation of your syllabus. All right, you can download the syllabus and the course schedule from Canvas. Also, under the welcome module, you'll find a number of course resources a style guide, a link to the library, a link to news about NOBTS, and a link to the Writing Center. Next, you'll see under Week 1, Unit 1, an opportunity to introduce yourself. I hope that you will uh, go to this discussion board and uh, tell me and others in the classroom uh, some interesting information about yourself, where you come from, tell us about your family, uh, tell us about your, uh, your background, uh, tell us your degree plan, and what is it that you are hoping to do in ministry. Talk about the ministry that you're in right now, or whatever job you're working. Tell us your hobbies and interests, and oh, if you post a picture, I will be pleased. I enjoy getting to know my students, and this is one of the great ways that I can get to know students, uh, both those who are in the classroom and those who are at a distance. Well, you will find that I have led the way uh, with a meet your professor. I have <laughs> I've told you more than you want to know about me, but I've posted pictures uh, of my sweet thing and uh, my children and my grandchildren, and of course, you want to see pictures of my grandchildren. So check out my introduction and please uh, give me one of your own. All right, now to get down to business. All right, uh, as I said, 
Uh, Canvas is, uh, is uh, made up of different modules, and there'll be uh, different modules for uh, each, uh, each unit. And so uh, there'll be to-do lists, there are PowerPoint lectures, there's bonus features like extra videos, maps, uh, uh, extra little articles that I've written. So lots of opportunities there for you to learn. But you will especially want to pay attention to the PowerPoint lectures. I will be uh, following these PowerPoints uh, in my weekly lectures to you. And so you can pull them up and uh, follow along, print them out, or uh, simply uh, refer to them later. But these are the PowerPoint lectures that I'll be lecturing from. All right, also <clears throat> within the course modules are your unit tests and unit reading reports. So these assignments will be completed on Canvas and you'll find study guides that help you to prepare for the unit tests. These PowerPoint lectures, the tests and reading reports as outlined in the modules really are the core of our, uh, our class. And so I hope that you will familiarize yourself with the Canvas uh, uh, learning platform. All right, let's talk about unit assignments. I have divided up the class into six units. And here I've listed the dates that end each unit. At midnight, at the end of each of these days. And so you'll want to be very careful to look at your syllabus, copy down these due dates in your calendar, and uh, keep up with them because these are very important. At the midnight, at the end of each day, your unit exam and reading report are due. So mark your calendar. All right. <clears throat> let's, let's talk about the unit tests. There are six unit tests. These tests are closed book, closed note, open memory. All right, so you'll be taking these tests from memory without referring to your textbook or your notes. These tests are online and you'll have 25 minutes to take each one. You'll see the time uh, uh, marking down and it will shut down at the expiration. All right, uh, if you've taken a class from me before, this is a different uh, this is a different timing system, and so I've ex I've, that's why I've set the time for 25 minutes uh, just to be sure that you have plenty of time to answer the questions and check them, all right? Now, please pay close attention. Each exam has a base value of 25 points, but each exam has one or two or three extra bonus questions and they can increase the value of each test. Some people feel like I'm trying to trick them or make them work hard or pull down the grade. That is not the case. Uh, there's a reason why we I call them bonus questions. Bonus comes from the Latin word meaning good and so these bonus questions are good for you. They give you an opportunity to answer more questions and earn more points, all right? So if you see a bonus question, be sure and answer it. Now, you need to also be sure that you complete your unit test by the deadline because if you miss a deadline, I will not reopen the test. Let me say this again. If you miss a deadline, I will not reopen the test. So, do not ask me to do so. The answer is already no, okay? But here's some good news. The lowest test grade will be dropped. 
So in case you forget to take a test, don't worry about it. You can drop that one missed test grade. Or if you have computer problems, if you go out of town for a revival or a D now, uh, you don't have to worry about one of these six tests. Now, if you're satisfied with your first five test scores, you can exempt yourself from the sixth. Or, if you take all six tests, I will drop the lowest grade. And so, uh, if you have trouble with the early test, or uh, uh, if you just are not able to uh, study well enough for another test, it's okay. The lowest test grade will be dropped. And so you'll find at the end of the semester, when it's time for me to calculate grades, I'm going to take your lowest test grade and I'm going to turn it into a zero. When this happens at the end of the semester, don't panic, all right? It's just part of the process. But I've learned over the years that it is helpful to my students if I offer to drop one test grade just in case something goes wrong. All right, well, let's talk about the unit reading reports because they are due at the same time. You will report your reading at the end of every unit and you are on the honor system, all right, because you will estimate your own reading and then report it according to, uh, according to your estimation. Now, again, if you miss the deadline, I will not reopen the reading report, which is why you need to take those unit deadline dates and mark them on your calendar. Now, as I said, you'll estimate the percentage of the reading that you completed each unit in 20% increments. The easiest thing to do is just to be sure that you read everything that I ask you to read, and then you can enter 100% and you'll earn five points. If you didn't quite read everything, well then you mark 80% and read uh, and get four points. If you're just over half, well that's 60% and that's three points and so on, all right? But please, I hope that you will do your reading. Honestly, you can pass my class without reading, but you will not learn everything that I want you to read. I can't put everything that I want you to learn in my PowerPoint lectures. And so the reading then adds to your knowledge of the history of Christianity. Now, at the end of the semester, uh, you'll have the opportunity to fill out a bonus reading report. A five point bonus will be awarded to students who have completed all of the assigned reading. This means that if you don't finish all of the reading in time for uh, the end of a unit, you'll post the lower uh, unit uh, score, but if you catch up with the reading that you did not do, then later on you can add five bonus points. Or of course, if you do the reading all along, well, that's the easy way to get those five extra points. All right, so uh, again, here's another opportunity for you to earn bonus points. The reading schedule is included in the syllabus. All right, you have two written assignments. Each one is a book review. So the first book that you will review is a biography. You'll read and review a biography of a subject located within the parameters of the early church and medieval era of the church. So some major figure from the first 1500 years. Could be Patrick of Ireland, could be Francis of Assisi, right, or many of the other great church fathers and church mothers that we'll study about. Now, suggested biographies are included in the selected bibliography, and they're divided out according to biographies and uh, books about uh, movements and events. Now, I will allow another book that's outside of the selected bibliography, but you must get my permission first. 
if you see the book that you want to read on the list, go ahead and secure it and begin reading it. You don't need to sign up or get my permission if it's on the list. It is, uh, it is uh, available to you. The book review of the biography is due on March the 6th. Now, the book review should be between six to eight double-spaced typewritten pages. Uh, it should contain a bibliographical entry at the um, top of the first text page of the review. All right, add a brief biographical sketch of the author. All right, uh, you can find uh, this biography usually perhaps on the back of the book. This is a time when it's acceptable to use Wikipedia. If the uh, person is living and teaching at a university, uh, that school will have uh, biographical information. There are several places to find uh, biographical information, but keep it brief, all right? I, I just want one brief paragraph about the author of the book. And then I want most of the review to be a summary of the contents of the book. But at the conclusion, I want you to write an application point about the impact of this person's life and ministry on your uh, personal life and ministry. What have you learned? What has inspired you uh, by this person? Um, what would you apply to your personal spiritual life or your ministry to others? It could be a negative lesson, all right? You might have learned what not to do, but at any rate, I want to see that you have applied what you have learned uh, to your life. Let's apply church history. And then uh, include a cover page on the very beginning of this book review. But remember, the cover page does not count uh, toward the uh, page count. This is six to eight uh, pages of your text. All right, the second book review will be a book review of a movement or event. All right, I've given you a couple of examples. Christian women uh, in the early church or early Christian martyr stories. You might want to write about a heresy. You might want to write about a council. You might want to write about the Crusades, all right? So you need a book review of a movement or event. And again, there's a list of options included in your syllabus in the selected bibliography under uh, the uh, heading of the, the books about movements or event. Okay, the second book review is due on April the 10th and the instructions are identical to those for the first book review. All right, so these are your two written assignments. These assignments are not difficult. What you need to do is to read, review, and apply. And if you do those, you will uh, you'll do well on these assignments. All right, uh, I have provided Turnitin, which is a uh, Canvas uh, tool that helps you to minimize plagiarism and copying from other sources. And so you will submit your assignment to Turnitin. Turnitin then will highlight the material that is found in its database and send you back a report. So check the highlighted material to be sure that it is cited properly. If you see major sections that have been highlighted, you may need to put more of your paper in your own words. All right, you won't have many footnotes or bibliographical entries uh, in these book reviews, but in that case, most of them will be highlighted. Submitting to turn it in does not count as a submission to me. All right, so you'll have two places to submit your assignment. One for turn it in, and then the other will be the place where you will uh, submit your book review uh, to me. Okay, uh, turn it in is not required. It is simply a service that is available to you.
Well, now it's time to put on my ugly face, all right? Arr. And I'm going to talk about penalties uh, because I want you to be sure that you understand your requirements and expectations, all right? So let's move on and talk about the first penalty deals with attendance. All right, in class and flex students are expected to attend and to participate in the class sessions. Any student missing more than nine hours may receive an automatic grade of F for the course and three tardies will count as one absence. All right, unit tests and reading reports. They must be submitted by the deadline because as I said, after the deadline, unit tests and reading reports will not be reopened. But uh, to, uh, to uh, offset that, one unit test grade will be dropped. All right, let's talk about tardiness. I may be your toughest professor in regard to uh, turning papers in on time. But here's my policy. A late project assignment will be assessed a 10% penalty if it is submitted after the deadline. Period. End of story. All right. So each book review is a 60 point assignment and so you would lose six points if you turned it in late. If it's more than five days late, well then it's 20% or 12 points. After one week, the penalty will be so severe that I hesitate to even tell you how bad it is and no assignment will be accepted after two weeks past the deadline. All right. Now, let me just say this. I am the worst procrastinator that you know. And when I was doing my master's work and my PhD work, I always waited until the last minute to start writing. I would read and read and read and I'd outline and uh, I would sit down to write and I would just say, oh, I'm going to read some more. Finally, when the due date got closer, the log jam broke and all of a sudden my writing block was over and I would begin to write, but it was too late. Uh, and I would be up all night long writing this paper. I often uh, punched print at 6 a.m. for an 8 a.m. class. I do not recommend writing your papers that way, but notice that my papers were on time. I expect your papers on time. If you're running late, you need to burn the midnight oil to get those papers in on time. Punctuality is one of the uh, character qualities that you are learning as a seminary student. So do not ask for an extension because I will not give it to you. I have high expectations about your punctuality with your papers. I will accept them late, but I will penalize them. Plagiarism actually is even more serious than tardiness. A high standard of personal integrity is expected of all students at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Any infraction will be reported to the Dean of Students for further action. And you can look in the graduate catalog for more information on the definition of plagiarism and consequences for violations. But suffice it to say that plagiarism is taking the words of another and presenting it to your professor as if you wrote those words. I will say that often in book reviews, I find that students read other book reviews and copy and paste them in their papers. Or even worse, they don't read the book and they simply copy and paste information about the subject of their book. Oh my word, these students 
uh, get penalized severely for plagiarism. Don't you do it. There's no reason to do it. Remember, these are simple, straightforward assignments. Read, review, apply, and everything is going to be great. All right, now it's time to put on my smiley face. All right, so I'm smiling again. I'm uh, happy because I know that uh, my students are going to fulfill my requirements and expectations, and we're going to have a great time of learning this semester, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, you want to know about how your grade will be calculated. So let's look at this. All right. I do things a little differently. It's not that each assignment uh, has a different weight. It is that each assignment gains points and you accumulate points through the semester. And so for your reading, if you read uh, all of your Assign, reading assignments every unit, you'll earn 30 points plus five bonus points on top of that. All right, you have five, you'll, you'll have five tests that will be scored and the base, uh, the base value is 125 points for those five tests. But remember, each test you have the opportunity to gain one or two or three, maybe even four extra points. And so you can gain more than 125 points. For the book reviews, 60 points each. And so the base score for all these assignments is 275 points. If you earn between 255 and 275 points, you'll earn an A. 230 to 254 points is a B. 210 to 229 is a C and so on. If you make less than 165 points, then you will fail the class. I'm going to make a prediction. More than half of you are going to make A's. That's right. Every class that I teach, more than half of my students make A's. Of the remaining students, most of them make B's. There'll be a couple of C's and a couple of D's, but if you want to fail my class, you have to work very hard. You have to not turn in assignments, turn them in late, plagiarize. You have to be absent too many times or neglect to turn in your uh, flex um, attendance. Those are the only ways you can fail my class. If you do the work, you will pass the class. If you do it well, you will make an A. I just finished posting grades for the fall, and I'm telling you the vast majority of my students made A's, and I hope that you fall into that category. If not, surely you're going to make a B or a C uh, and, uh, and pass the class. All right, so just press on, do the work, keep up with it, and you're going to have a great semester in my class. All right, let me talk to the students who are uh, taking this uh, through the flex format. We call it NOLA to you flex. If you're taking the class in this format, you are required to be in class either through viewing the lectures live or by viewing the recorded lectures on Canvas. All right, many of my students uh, participated in the class from a distance, but during the class time. And uh, uh, we figured it out so that I could hear the students and they could hear me and the students in the classroom and we had a great interactive experience. Some of you will not be able to attend Monday from 2 to 5 and so you will view the recorded lecture on Canvas. You will be asked to certify that you have been present for the live session or uh, if you have viewed the recorded sessions. Uh, this certification will be done through a keyword uh, that I will announce at some point 
in the lecture. I'll announce the key word so you listen for it and then send the key word to my Flex Assistant this semester. This is Colin Dixon and his email address is there on screen but I will be sure and put that in your syllabus and we'll announce it at the beginning of class. All right, so uh, you will attend uh, from a distance uh, through, uh, through the Blue Jeans uh, technology. You'll certify your attendance with the key word. Now, you'll find the video lectures on Canvas under the Blue Jeans link, which you find on the left-hand column of the Canvas shell. All video lectures are available for seven days after the video is posted. If you're unable to view the video and send in the key word within that time frame, you will be considered absent for that class session. And remember, uh, you can have only three absences during the semester. And technical issues will not be considered a valid reason for missing a lecture. If you have technical issues, I'm so sorry. Uh, you need to be sure that your uh, computer uh, is, uh, meets all the requirements of uh, receiving and broadcasting the uh, Flex lectures. And again, you're only allowed to miss three class lectures as specified in the attendance policy. All right? So that's NOLA to you, Flex. Again, I found this to be an excellent a uh, robust uh, format for uh, involving uh, distant students in learning church history. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the use of electronics in the classroom. It is almost a waste of my time because most of you are not going to pay attention to me. What I would like for you to do is to turn off your cell phones and put them away. When I see cell phones out on the, the desk, I wonder what is so much more important on that iPhone than what I am teaching, all right? But students always think that their electronics are the most important thing in their lives and much more important than the professor. This does not please me, all right? If someone needs to get in touch with you, they need to understand you're in class and you'll be out of class soon and you can respond to them at that time. All right, so turn off your cell phones and put them away. Otherwise, I'm going to be insulted. All right, and uh, many of you will bring your laptops into the classroom and this is acceptable because I'm going to assume that you are following along with uh, my PowerPoints. All right, but if you're using your laptops for other purposes, that are not suitable, well then you're gonna be a distraction to yourself and to others around you. So be sure that you use electronics appropriately. All right, finally, we'll talk about the emergency plan. In case of an emergency, whatever it might be, if you have to evacuate the campus, go to the seminary website at nobts.edu for information related to the seminary or check your canvas shell for instructions that I might leave for the class. All right? Well, we've come to the end of the syllabus. I hope this has been helpful to you, if perhaps overly long, uh, but uh, I wanted to at least uh, share with you the requirements and expectations for the class in anticipation of a wonderful semester together. I love church history. I'm so looking forward to the opportunity to teach you about my very favorite subject. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.